Hello, in this video, I will show you how to write program entry points in Scala 3. You will learn how to write common line programs that take arguments, like this one. So here I call a program named greet with an argument community and it prints hello community. I can call it with another argument For instance, Martin Odorsky, to greet Martin Odorsky. First, I will show you how to use the at main annotation to define program entry points. Then, we will see how to write common line programs that take arguments. After that, we will have a look at two more advanced features, such as handling a variable number of arguments and passing arguments to custom data types. Finally, we will see that we can also wire our own logic for parsing program arguments in case we need more control. The content of this video is largely inspired by the content of the course Effective Programming in Scala. You can find more information about that course in the description of the video. Let's start! Here is an empty Scala 3 project. It could have multiple files, each containing several definitions. So where does the program start? In Scala, programs are not evaluated from top to bottom, but from an entry point. Here I decide to call the entry point run, but it could be whatever name you want. And the body of the entry point just contains a println statement. The at main annotation tells the compiler that this is where the program starts. So now, if I run the program from SBT with the task run, it compiles the project and invokes that method. There are a couple of things you need to know about program entry points. You cannot annotate methods that require constructing a class instance first before calling them. For instance, if I create a class main with a method run in it and I try to compile the project, I get an error saying that the method cannot be accessed statically. What I can do, though, is to annotate the method of an object. And even an object nested within another object. These cases are valid because we can always refer to the run method with a static path, like main.run.run. Now, not the written type of the method run. It is unit, which means that the program does not return any value. For now, any type will do, because the compiler will discard any value returned by the entry point before stopping the runtime. In the future, it might be possible to return more meaningful values, such as an exit code. Last but not least, you can define several entry points in a program. Then, when you want to run the program, you have to indicate which entry point to use. If I do that with SBT, it asks me which entry point I want to run. This is all you need to know about the at main annotation. 
use it to indicate your program entry point, which has to be a static method. In the example I showed in the introduction, I could pass an argument to the program. How do we achieve that? For instance, how could I change my program so that it takes a number as a parameter? We achieve this by adding a parameter to the program annotated with at main. Here I add a parameter, let's name it x, to the method run. And the type of x is int because we expect a number. Let's see it in action. With SBT, I can pass argument to my program by writing run 42. It prints, hello, I got 42. Now, what happens if I omit the argument? I see an error, illegal command line, more argument expected. And what happens if I provide an argument, but not a number? Uh, I see an error, number format exception for input string and uh, the value I passed. We can add more parameters of various types. For instance, an argument of type string, which I call S. By default, Scala can parse command line arguments to basic types like int, string, double, or boolean. This concludes the introduction to command line arguments. The takeaway point is that the parameters of your main method are turned into parameters of your program. The compiler provides the parsing logic for you. Now let's have a look at a couple of more advanced use cases. First, how to write a program that takes an arbitrary number of arguments. Consider, for instance, a program that takes an arbitrary number of integer values as parameters and prints their sum. We model the arbitrary number of parameters taken by the program by taking an arbitrary number of parameters in the method annotated with at main as well. In Scala, we do that by defining a parameter whose type is followed by a star. In our case, we want to take an arbitrary number of integers, so our method takes int parameters. Finally, the second advanced use case is how to pass arguments to user-defined data types. Consider a program that defines an enumeration type, color, which can be either red, green, or blue. We do that in Scala with an enum that has three cases, red, green, and blue. We would like to write a program that takes as parameter a color name and prints the color is followed by the name of the color. So I have added a color parameter to my main method. If I try to compile the program, I get an error 
no implicit argument of type common line parser from string of color was found. This is because color is a user-defined type and the compiler does not know how to pass a program argument, which is provided as a string, into a color. Nevertheless, we can teach the compiler how to pass colors. We achieve this by adding a given instance of type command line parser from string of color. When the compiler compiles the method run, it tries to resolve a value of type command line parser dot from string for each parameter type. Here we have a parameter of type color, so the compiler tries to resolve a value of type common line parser dot from string of color. To resolve that value, the compiler looks into the context of that method run. So when we provide the given definition here, the compiler uses it. Previously, we were using arguments of basic types, such as int and string. So we didn't have to write such a given definition because these types are supported by default. In case you already know Scala2, given definitions are similar to implicit definitions in Scala2. So let's implement this given definition. We have to implement one method from string. which takes the row argument value as a string and returns the past color. We can signal passing failures by throwing an exception of type illegal argument exception. Since color is an enum, it comes with a handy method value of, which does exactly what we want. It takes as a parameter a string and returns a color, or it throws an exception if the color name is invalid. So we can implement the method from string by forwarding to color.valueOf. Now the program compiles, and I can run it with a valid color name. And if I try to run the program with an invalid color name, like yellow, it fails with the error illegal argument exception, in a case not found, yellow. So this is how to pass common line arguments into user-defined types. The takeaway point is that you can provide a given instance of type common line parser from string for any user-defined type you want to pass program arguments to. As you have seen so far, the mechanism for handling command line arguments in Scala supports a variety of use cases out of the box. But what if you want to do something we did not show so far, like customizing the error reporting to show a custom help message, or supporting conditional arguments? In such cases, you can always fall back to processing the program arguments by yourself instead of relying on the mechanism provided by the compiler. You can achieve this by defining an entry point that takes a variable number of parameters of type string. Then you are free to write your own logic for passing the arguments or to use a specific library for this purpose. In summary, we have seen how to define program entry points in Scala 3 by annotating a static method with at main. We have seen that we can define the program parameters by defining method parameters. We have seen that Scala 3 can pass arguments to basic types out of the box. And finally, you can extend this to custom types by implementing a given definition for your type. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you learned a few tips. See you next time.